Ever since we were kids, the adventures and the stories of heroes and villains we grew up watching on the big screen continued to live within our minds, where we created new storylines, new adventures, with toys using our own imagination. In this video, we're going to see how these figurines and toys that we hold dear to our hearts are made, and how the artists that created them perfected the designs that enable us to express ourselves through them. This is the way. Hasbro is one of the leading toy makers in the industry. In the past, the artists at Hasbro had to hand sculpt the toys with wax. Today, they digitally sculpt their toys due to the many benefits it brought to their pipeline. Here's James and Jan from Hasbro. So with that guy, how long did it take you to do that in wax, traditionally? This took me four weeks. Four weeks? And that That's a was, month. Yeah, that was pretty much all work. And now, to do this, yeah, every, I hear everybody laughing. Now, to do this in ZBrush, it, it might take a week. There's a, there's a lot of stuff there, but all of that texture was done by hand, where now, there's so many different ways to do it in ZBrush. It's like, you know, you can do it. Also with that, when we were doing wax figures as well, this figure's been approved by Lucas, and Jan's been working on this thing for like months. And so finally, after iteration after iteration, it's finally approved. Great. He boxes it up, he mails it off, and now the guys at Hasbro are like, well, where's the figure? We haven't received it. Well, Jan's saying, I mailed it off. All of a sudden, the thing's lost in the mail. So this is months now, approved work, painstaking work, and now the thing's gone. So that means Jan has to re-sculpt it. With ZBrush, with digital, we already have the file, we just send it again. So we don't have to worry about all of these kind of things that we're, we were limited to in the past, where if the figure breaks, if it gets lost in the mail, if if something happens to it, if it gets destroyed. As long as we have that digital file, we can repurpose it, we can send it off again. It just gives us so many advantages, so many things that we weren't privy to before. And it's just, it, powers are limitless. And whatever we can do now with ZBrush, it's just the sky's the limit. So it is our preferred program of choice. One of the most important things that Hasbro focuses on when designing their figurines is how the joints bend. Here's Tom from Hasbro. Again, the idea of getting this thing to, you know, articulate and move and, and again, hide in the joints. So it, it's bending his knee, but it shouldn't be too obvious. How do you hide this? How do you make this thing as functional as possible without breaking that illusion, without, you know, putting these really ugly gaps in there in order to make it, I mean. If you've seen our previous video on how NPC brought Godzilla to life, you may recall the process in which they create the details of the character. When it comes to toys, the process of designing the details is a bit different, and that's because the artist at Hasbro has to think about functionality. You know, a lot of these details we had to make sort of like relief sculpted because in the grand scheme of the entire project, you, you really do have to consider size of the particular thing and then how much, how much money it's going to cost in the tooling and try to think, well, we could have made this bathroom exactly like it's shown in the show, but then like how much, how much other things would have had to gotten sacrificed. Uh, and really, because this bathroom is kind of tucked in this corner, we we did decide to sort of well, let's let's sort of just make this a little more realistic for ourselves, and 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 you know make some of this stuff relief sculpted. So like the the bed is is sort of foreshortened, but our our nip, our uh, child figure here he fits, he stands in this place, and he also fits up in his little hammock, so you can still get a lot of great uh, display and play options there. Oh. So this is like two sets, not even not complete put together. Traveling there, the doorway. So this is how many pieces can this be? It, it's honestly infinitely. You could infinite. It, you could just keep connecting them. They, in theory, like I could be putting it down a hallway of your house, like having that <laughs> yeah, down the hallway. And, then, and you could pop this. You know, I won't do it now, but you could pop this wall off, exposing this side, as Paul showed in the the digital version of it. Yeah. But you know, being able to do that, and, and this is not something we probably could have done when we used to traditionally sculpt either, where this was all done by hand in wax, and having that kind of control was just not possible back in the day. Again, the beauty of digital is just being able to ideate all this stuff, and even from just from an engineering perspective, and figure out what is possible, and just continuing pushing the, the limits on that. So how did the artist approach designing the functionality of the toys before doing things digitally? Sometimes what we'll have is a figure and it might have a mechanism that goes in it. Something's going to be spring-loaded, if you're going to twist him at the waist, he's going to come 
come back with like a punch or something like that. Traditionally, when we were doing a wax figure, we would have to send that down to our model shop. They would have to make a mold of that, take that figure, hollow that out. They would have to fill all of these components and make that shell and make a working model within that. And so it takes a lot of time to go through all of that just to come out to figure out something, oh, okay, now this isn't working. So now the model shop has to start back over, hollow out a new figure and keep essentially tweaking this until they can get the mechanisms working. Now with ZBrush, we can figure out the tolerances, we can figure out whether or not this is gonna be working or something like that, and we can cut down that time that we're sending the figure down. Traditionally, when we were using wax to haul that figure out, put all the mechanics in it and everything like that. You now know a bit more about how toys were made and how we've came a long way since those early days. Back in the day, they would use wax to sculpt the toys, but today they use a digital workflow due to all the benefits it brings. Anything that you create digitally can be made into a toy. So if you want to try your hand at creating your own figurine or toy, I'll leave a link to the free version of the same program Hasbro uses down below. If you enjoyed watching this video, please hit that like and subscribe button, as well as letting us know what you'd like to see next by leaving a comment down below. This is Kingsley from Pixelogic. Happy Zimmer!